Madam, can I talk to you? That was about eight years ago when one of my former students knocked at my door and she was looking so desperate and filled with tears. She was looking for someone to talk to. For the past 12 years, I've had an opportunity of meeting young girls and young boys like the majority who are here, who come to the university to join to pursue their first degrees. They are famously known as freshers. And it's always an excitement to be a fresher because most of the youth do not get that opportunity. And most of these freshers, usually they are very happy, excited, and inspired for the opportunity. And every time I meet them, I usually have these questions. What really inspires them? What makes them excited? And then the second version of my question is, how much are they aware of the journey they are about to embark? As I ask myself these questions, a reflection of myself, well, several years ago, when I also joined the university as a fresher, come into my mind. And I ask myself the same questions. What inspired me then? How much did I know of the journey I was about to embark? Well, just the opportunity of going to the university is an excitement itself meeting new friends, the freedom, and everything. But on the second question, how much did I know of what I was expected as a fresher, as a university student? As I recall myself and my life back then, I realized I knew very little. Probably I knew I had to get good grades, but that's it. And then I realized that, oh, the youth I meet every year, the freshers I meet every year, they could be stuck in the same situation I was stuck several years ago, of knowing very little of the journey that they were about to embark. And as I got those answers into my mind, I usually get a second opportunity of meeting some of these freshers in the class. And that is the privilege of being a lecturer. But we meet in class where I teach limnology, where I know very few know about it here. And that's all, academic business. I have to teach, I have to lecture, give tests, exam, do assessment and give results. And that's it, and that's all. So I did this for several years, maybe four to five years of my work life. And then I got some questions inside me. Is this it? Is this all that I will be doing everything when I meet these youth? Can't I do more? Can't I be more? So these are the questions that kept coming into myself as I was continuing with my annual cycle of teaching. And then, well, <coughs> a reflection of myself again came back when I was a student. What would I have wished for? What were my main challenges as a youth? And then I realized among the most disturbing questions most of the youth at the university get is, now we are settled with life at the university, but what happens after we get out of this? Because that is already a comfort zone, but we don't know what is outside there. Will I be employed? I hear there's a high rate of unemployment, but even if I get a job, Will I be ready? Am I ready for the job competition? And a number of other questions that are related to job insecurity. And then I realized that it is true most of our students are lacking some of the skills that will strengthen them to go and perform once they're out of the university. So well, I decided to give myself a credit and say, probably I can be a little superhero to some of these students and try and do something. Just become more. But don't ask me at that time if I knew what that meant. I didn't know what could I become. But I just knew I need to become more and I need to engage. And most of the university students, 
are the youth. So I knew I need to think of a way of engaging with this youth community at my university. Now let's go back to the girl I told you about who came in my office eight years ago. I told her, come in and have a seat. Please talk to me, but she couldn't talk. She was just crying. I gave her time. The moment she could speak, she said, Madam, I want to quit my studies. I'm the first year, I've just come to start my studies, but I have a big problem. I have a son whom I've left at home. His father is taking care of him. But since I've arrived here at the university, he's been telling me in order for him to continue with child support, I need to stop studying and go back to take care of the child. He cannot support a child whose mother has abandoned. So her main cry was that she has to balance now. She has to choose between her own son and her studies. And she couldn't make that decision on her own. And that was the major reason for her despair. Well, in my mind I said, I wanted to engage, but this is not what I expected. This is too heavy stuff. But it wasn't very smooth. It took time, a lot of discussions between me and her, looking at the options that we have, what can she do and what cannot do, and what can be the priorities. But we thank God in the end, she managed to get a part-time job. She continued studying, using her part-time earning and also efficient use of her scholarship to support her child who had to stay now back in the village with her mother. And she had to be strong. But most important, it was encouraging her that she can do it. So after three years, she went back home with her degree with her son happy and well taken care of. But mostly importantly, she was not the same person. So to me, I felt it as a very great achievement, and that's why I call it my first life inspiring encounter with the youth. And it became like salt. I realized I have to do more. Actually, I want to do more. So I had already discovered that I can be a counselor then. Because with her, it was all about counseling without training anyway. But also, I could become a friend. I could become a mentor. I could also become a role model to some of these students. So I opened or I widened up my door of engagement. There have been several after her that I engaged. And some of them, I've helped them to perform better in their studies, get scholarships, get their jobs. But most important to me are those who have obtained skills that enable them to dream, to have the courage to dream, and live to achieve their dreams after they leave the university. And speaking of that, I must say, I'm also very proud of some of my former students, whom now I call my friends, who are among the organizers of this specific TEDx Oster Day event. So I want them to know Wherever they are, the actions they do, they usually touch my heart by far and they should keep doing it. But that is not all about inspiration. I've inspired them, motivated them, encouraged them, but they did the same to me. In the process, I got inspired. In the process, I received a lot of satisfaction. The satisfaction I never knew I could have or access. It was different from the satisfaction I usually expect or acknowledge. So this was not only an inspiration to them, but mostly important also to myself. Now, my call to all of us who are here, all of us who one day will listen to this talk as it goes around, is that wherever we are, be it at work, at home, at our community, at our neighborhood, families. Let's try and be more with every youth we encounter because this will transform the future 
This will make a better future, which together we will be proud of. And lastly, I must say that let's spark the future of the youth because they will definitely spark the future of the others. Thank you.